this talk is looking at innovative ways that we can use vacuum assisted biopsy to um, treat um, lesions where before we always manage them with surgery. So um, in my talk, I'm going to cover three main areas. One is um, high risk lesions. Um, this is a histological diagnosis where you've done a biopsy and you've identified a lesion, um, which is a broad spectrum of lesions that are considered high risk or histologically B3. And traditionally, they were always managed with surgery. So that would mean that a woman would require a wire localization, general anesthetic, and end up with a surgical excision. And most of these would end up being benign. And even if you did identify cancer, they'd often have to go for a second operation because we haven't assessed margins. So what we've been doing is looking at vacuum-assisted biopsy as an alternative to performing a surgical biopsy. And certainly in the UK, we adopted this in 2016 and, um, and has been part of our routine practice within the National Breast Screening Programme. And what I will do is present data within my talk, which shows that this is a safe alternative to surgery. And we have now stopped about just under 70% of women from having surgery by treating them with vacuum assisted excision. The, the second area that we're looking at is good prognostic tumours. Which So this is your grade one ER, PR positive HER2 negative cancers and whether we can again avoid surgery by doing vacuum assisted excision. And this really arose following the Marmot review, which looked at whether breast screening saves lives within the UK. And they concluded that breast screening does save lives, but we do have overdiagnosis. And these are cancers that would not have normally presented if a woman hadn't attended for screening. So for the last four decades, we've always treated them with wide local excision, and then they require adjuvant radiotherapy um, radi um, and endocrine therapy potentially radi um, chemotherapy, and we've always done sentinel lymph node biopsy of the axilla. Um, but what we're looking at again is whether we can use vacuum assisted excision for small cancers, so 15 millimetres or smaller, that we can excise them using vacuum assisted biopsy, either under ultrasound guidance or um, using X-ray guidance to perform the procedure. Um, this is performed by the radiologists, so rather than the surgeons in the UK. So this is really quite an exciting role development for us as radiologists. And we're currently um, recruiting to a study called SMALL, which is a randomised trial looking at um, vacuum assisted excision versus your conventional breast conserving surgery. And we've recruited 402 patients to date. The target is to recruit 801 patients. So recruitment is going well with regards to that. And I am the radiology lead for that uh, trial. So that's really exciting. And then the third area that I think that there is potential for um, is in the context of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. We know as chemotherapy agents have improved that we now have a large proportion of women who are having chemotherapy that will have a complete imaging response, which results in a complete pathological response when they go for surgery. And, um, and they're still being treated, though, with either breast conserving surgery or mastectomy. And the question that's being asked is, can we de-escalate surgery? Do we really need to operate on these women if they've had a complete response to chemotherapy? And so therefore, one way is to sample the tumour bed after you've completed chemotherapy, but before surgery to see if there are any residual tumour cells. And uh, so we're looked, and so some studies have been done um, in Europe in collaboration with the UK to look at whether vacuum assisted biopsy could be used to assess the tumour bed post chemotherapy to see how accurate is vacuum assisted biopsy in determining if there is residual disease or not. So I think this is another potential exciting area for its use and could support de-escalation trials in the future.